Well, welcome everyone. And we're excited on tonight uh, because we have something a little different for you for Bible study. Hello, our Solid Rock family and everybody that is watching this via the replay. We're excited to be here. And we're going to ask uh, Minister uh, Tish Rogers if she would open us up in prayer. Yes. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for being God all by yourself, O oh God. Thank you, Father God, for watching over us, O oh God, and continually keeping your hand upon us, O oh God. Father God, I pray right now, Lord God, for each and every person, O oh God, that may be listening, O oh God, to this message, O oh God. I pray that you'll meet them right where they are, O oh God. Thank you for reminding us what your word says, O oh God, that you'll live, never leave us, nor will you forsake us, O oh God, but you will be with us always, O oh God. And so, Father God, I pray right now for a spirit of peace to rest upon your people, O oh God. I pray for revelation and wisdom and understanding, O oh God, of who you truly are to us, O oh God, for each and every person, O oh God, that's listening, O oh God. And Father God, we give you glory, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity, O oh God. And we give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So again, welcome everybody. And as I said, we're doing something a little bit different tonight. We're going to uh, sort of have like a conversation about uh, having faith during the pandemic. I know a lot of you have had questions about faith and how we as Christians are, you know, what, what is our faith supposed to be like uh, during this pandemic? So tonight, we're going to have some real talk about having faith during the pandem pandemic. So uh, with us tonight is Minister Tish Rogers, who just opened us up in prayer, and Elder Melissa Young, and of course, our pastor, Bishop uh, Brooks. And we are, the two of them are in education, and they've had to deal with many different kinds of situations during this pandemic, both personally and professionally. So um, I have um, several questions that I'm gonna be asking them to help all of us, you know, to increase our faith during this pandemic. Now, just to give you a little bit of, of background, um, since March of this year, no one expected us to be where we are today in terms of not being able to leave our homes for a certain amount of time, have to have your face covered. We've gone through and are continuing to go through the COVID-19, the economic situation because of COVID-19, you know, people have been laid off. Businesses are, are closing or closed. Every day you see some big corporation who is filing bankruptcy because of uh, the outcome of COVID-19. And then on top of that, there's all the racial tension with the police. Okay, demonstrations and statues being taken down and that sort of thing. And all of this has impacted us in so many different ways. And if we're real about it, you know, uh, I know my faith has been tested. And so if we're real about, it, you know, our faith has just been tested because of all this stuff that's going on. And now when they said uh, uh, we were hoping and, and praying that the numbers with the pandemic would go down, the numbers uh, specifically here in North Carolina are going up. When I checked this morning, uh, just today, as this, as this is being recorded, uh, there were 1,843 new confirmed cases just here in North Carolina. So the pandemic's not going away. So as we've said over and over, you know, things are not going to be the same. You've heard uh, Bishop Brooks say over and over and over that church is not going to be the same. How we do church is not going to be the same. And so not just church, but also how we have family gatherings, how we uh, have just go to the grocery store, how we go shopping. I was literally uh, wanting to run into Walmart yesterday just to go mm -hmm. to one little thing, run into Walmart. And I get there and there's a line to get into the Walmart. I never would have thought that. It's not Christmas. You know, it's not Black Friday sale. <laughs> you know, that's the only time that I've ever stood in line to get into the Walmart. And uh, there was a line, and it was around the, the, around the building to get into the Walmart because they can only have so many people in there at a time. Things are changing uh, as, we, as we speak. And so how do we have faith during all this? What, you know, how do we continue to have the level of faith that we have? And, and we all know that faith is belief and devotion to God. And the Bible tells us that, that we believe in God, even if we can't see him, even when we don't see him. And Hebrews 11 and 6 gives us a definition that says, 
that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of those things that we can't see. So tonight, church family and everyone who's viewing this, we're just going to have a real talk conversation about uh, having faith in the pandemic. So I'm going to ask, uh, be asking some questions. And of course, Melissa and Tish, and of course, our pastor, whenever he gets ready to, to hop in, he will uh, join us. I know we, we, we gonna have something that he's going to want to add to this, this conversation with all that wisdom. And so, uh, so I'm just going to start with some questions and we're going to flow from there. So again, we thank you for being here, um, um, Elder Melissa and Minister Tish and, and pastor. And so my first question is, um, and he, either one of you, I, I will start with Melissa. Melissa, during the pandemic, the midst of the pandemic, has your faith grown, stayed the same, or weakened? And explain to us about that. And then we'll go to Minister Tish. I can say probably during the pandemic, my faith has, is gone up and down, like I think most people have. Um, because when the pandemic first started, of course, we didn't really take it as serious and think that it was going to be as major as it has turned out to be. Um, and so one of the things that probably sort of shook my faith was when the pandemic first started, um, I had several persons that I knew back in my home in Virginia that actually passed from the COVID virus. So that for me shook me a little bit to say, wow, this really is real. Um, because people I actually know and have had a relationship with have passed from this virus. So it's something that we need to take more serious. And then at the same time, asking God that question, God, what's going on? Because it's not a pandemic that's just here in the United States, but it's something that has been global all across the country. Um, and so when you think of it in that context, you're like, okay, God, what's going on? Mm -hmm. that's mm. Tish, what about you? Um, I kind of was thinking along the same lines um, as Melissa with it has grown, it has been tested. Um, at, there are times where it's probably stayed the same and then there are times where I believe I could, if I would be honest, I could say my faith has been weakened. Um, I've learned to trust God in areas that I never thought I would have needed. Um, we should trust God in every area of our life but there are things that has happened during this time that I never thought I would have had to lean and depend on God um, specifically in that area, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I never thought I would see the day where, you know, you can't go out of your house without putting a mask on your face in order to stay safe. Mm -hmm. um, you said that earlier, uh, Sandra, where you were at the Walmart, you wanted to just run into the Walmart, but there was a line. Um, never thought I would have seen a day where a graduating class can't graduate. Um, when you have a loved one in the hospital, you can't go visit them. When you lose a loved one, you can't have a funeral. Um, I've had individuals who's, um, a, mom, a friend of mine's mom passed. She couldn't go to her funeral. They, they couldn't have a funeral. It was in New York in the beginning of this when the numbers in New York were, you know, high. Never thought. Um, I would have had to experience, I would have experienced something like that in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. So that, those are areas where I've learned to trust God, um, all the more. Um, and that's why it's so important when he says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will break mm -hmm. your paths. And so it just, um, kind of reassures me that Tish, you don't, you don't know. I know God holds the future in his hands. We don't always know what the future holds. And so it's so important that we trust God in every area of our life. That's good. That's good. So, so what has helped y'all to maintain your faith? Like when it got really hard, Melissa, you were talking about and telling us about the people, you know, from your home church and Tish, I know you've had some things personally. You actually had a family member to, to get shot during this time, just going out to get something to eat and was shot. So, so Melissa and Tish, what has helped y'all to maintain your faith? For, I guess the, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tish. <laughs> um, for me, um, maintaining my faith has, um, I've maintained my faith by being remi reminded of the things that God has brought me through in the past. Um, 
when it, when you stop and you think about some of the most difficult times in your life that he saw you through it mm -hmm. to the end and you came out on the other side okay those mm -hmm. are reassuring blessings for me that help me remember that you know what god your word declares never have i seen the righteous forsaken nor my seed begging bread and so for me it's just remembering the things that he's brought me through and then reminding myself that he says i'm the same god yesterday today and forevermore and there's nothing new under the sun so the pandemic caught me by surprise. This pandemic caught you by surprise. The pandemic caught the churches by surprise, if we could be honest. The pandemic caught the um, president by surprise. Politicians, it's, it's caught the whole world by surprise. But by gee golly, it did not catch our God off guard. Mm -hmm. So just remembering the things that he's brought me through in the past where I didn't think I could survive or um, come out on the other end okay um, just constantly reminding myself that you did it then you will do it again that's good that's good Melissa um, I concur just remembering what God has already done um, the times that God has already blessed during seasons where I've been in a storm um, and didn't know if the storm was ever going to be over and didn't know how I was going to get out of the storm um, but knowing, looking back, God brought me out of those storms. Um, one of the things that I also found that was helpful was just talking with my mom and my aunts, because they're a generation that have already been through, through some storms. You know, they've been through a lot of trials and tribulations and just holding on to that same faith that they've had that has brought them through is the same faith that they've instilled in me to bring me over. Um, and just understanding that the word says, I am God. And, and standing on that, God is God through whatever situation we're going through. Um, and when we trust him, when we keep our hand in him, even when we can't see our way through, God brings us out on the other side. That's good. Can we, I want to stay there for just a second, Melissa. You, you talked about how... Um, uh, just talking with your, your mom and your aunt and people like that, you know, and so many of our young people, so many of our young people need some reassuring during this. I mean, because, you know, I think of this generation that's young people right now, they've seen things that like my generation has never experienced before. So how do we encourage the young people to keep the faith? you know, to, to keep going for me there because they're dwelt in all the, the pandemic. The Some of them have been laid off from their jobs. Some of them, you know, are out marching, you know, with the things going on. So how do we help them keep the faith? Um, I found myself being very transparent, um, especially with my oldest son. He's, he's a junior at Virginia State. And like you said, towards the end of the semester, it became hard for him to focus on online learning and still going to work. So just encouraging him every day saying, guess what, you got this, you got this. Um, keep the faith, you're gonna make it through. And you know, doing towards the end of the semester, he started having anxiety because he was gonna have to move out of his apartment because the official semester was gonna be over and his job wouldn't transfer him. And so then that was another anxiety. Mom, what am I going to do? I don't have a job over the summer because they won't transfer me. And so I just had to encourage him. Guess what? You've been in this position before where you thought you weren't going to have a job. And guess what? God made a way and you did and you did get a job. So I just had to encourage him. I said, guess what? Don't try to do everything at one time. Also take steps. Think about what's most important to you. And you focus on those things because a lot of times our young people, they're focusing on so many things at one time that they, that they get lost in what they really need to focus on. And so I had to really help him to prioritize what was, the, what was his main objectives for the summer. And the main objective, first of all, was finishing out the semester. Don't worry about what's gonna happen this summer. I need you to focus on this right now finishing out the semester. And when the semester is over, then we'll go to the next step. Um, and so one of the things is just being very transparent um, with our young people to let them know, guess what? I've already been where you've been. 
your grandparents have been where you've been and look where where we've all come so it's nothing new that you're going through but we all just got to stand and go through that's good that's good tish what about you i think uh like melissa said encouraging them and also um be a living epistle uh, a living epistle in front of them um, i think sometimes our children watch us more than we believe other children watch us more than we believe. Um, I've had some kids recently say some things to me that um, they weren't, you know, bad things, but I didn't realize how much young adults really do watch me based on some of the comments they've made, you know, to me. And, and, and they were all good comments. And when I sit back and I'm thinking, gosh, you really do watch me. Um, I had a nephew um, going off into the military and when my niece got shot, I was going to go visit my niece. Well, he was scheduled to leave that next day. And when his mom told him I had to leave to go out of town, he said to his mom, oh man, I gotta see Aunt Tish before I leave. I want her to lay those holy hands on me and pray for me. That blessed me that my nephew who just graduated from high school saw something in me that he would say to his mom before I leave to go off into the military, I've got to get to Aunt Tish so that she can pray for me. Um, nothing that I've done on my own, but I know it's just the grace of God. And so I think it's important for our children and, and, and their friends and our you know, um, grandchildren and uh, people in the community and kids in the church to see us um, living what we say, what we preach, to see us living what the gospel says, what the word of God says, and not being one way um, inside the four walls of the church and then we're a different way um, in our homes and that's um, I, I'm constantly asking God I, I don't want to be that in front of my children I don't want to be um, uh, fake I mean I just I don't I don't want to be a hypocrite mm -hmm. I want them to to say that hey you know I've, I've seen my mom get upset I've seen her um, go through tough times and how she handled it was amazing to me. And so I think um, the most important thing we can do for our children is just let them see Christ in us. Um, and, and, and that's not always beating the Bible over their head or beating them up with the scripture or um, saying to them, well, you know, this is what the word of God says. And sometimes I do. I even say to um, Carrington sometimes, have you prayed? Have you asked God? He'll speak. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's key. Hey man, Sandra, I think also um, there's an old song that the consolers used to sing that said, may the life I live speak for me. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened before the pandemic, the life we were living, our children, their friends, and those that we are around have been watching and looking at us. And you just can't fool them by telling them to do what I say do anymore. They see what we're doing and how we're living. And the life we live should speak for us. And when it does, it should speak volumes. It should speak loud and clear. And I think that when our children see that we are serious about our walk with God and our faith in God, then it will, just like uh, Minister Tish said, it will uh, cause them to know where they can go in the time of the storm. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Bishop, that's real good. So, so let me switch gears for a second. And ask about like faith like in general you know so many we're talking about you know where our level of faith is how we can help our young people but how can we help people to see that where we are right now is a season of faith growing and not a seat versus a season of faith regression but how can we help people see that our faith can grow right now i will say during this season we show that it grows by not giving up mm. um, because one of the things that happens is when trials and tribulations come it tells us it's to grow us mm. and so when we stand on that faith even in situations that we have not been through before this is an opportunity for god to see are we truly trusting him Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what God wants to see. God wants to see, are we going to truly trust him 
in every situation that we're going through. And so this is an opportunity to show God, yes, I'm trusting you. And to show him that we're trusting him means that my faith is increasing versus decreasing. Because one of the things about faith, it says that it's, it's hope. And so if we lose hope, then our faith regresses. But if we stand on our hope, stand on that faith to say, even in the midst of this, I can't see my way out, but I know God is going to bring me out. God knows that we're standing on who he is. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Tish. I think every opportunity that we have in life um, is an opportunity to upgrade your faith or an opportunity to cause your faith to regress. Um, it's your choice. Um, I, I think during this time, um, I wrote, the Lord reminded me of this acronym he gave me for trust years ago, and it was totally rely upon the Savior's timing. That's what he gave me for trust. And when, when, when we say out of our mouth that we trust God, does our actions line up with that? Um, and so I think for, you know, people to realize that, yes, your our faith is being tested. Yes, our faith is being tried. But has it ever been tested and tried before now? It's, this isn't the first time that we've been tried. It's being tested and tried in a different way. But it doesn't mean it's never been tested and tried before. And so what I think is the fact that, it's, that we're being tested and tried in a different way, we're going to have to try to do something different than what we've done before. The, the trial and tribulations that we came through before, the actions that we did to take place then may not be the same actions that we'll be able to use to take place now. So in order to increase our faith, what we have to do is get into that secret place with God, learn what he says about us, learn who he say we are, learn what he says that we should have and should not have. And I think when we do that, uh, uh, the news station can't tell me that. Um, going to church can't tell me that. I, I never forget the Lord said to me one time, you're looking for somebody to validate something that they didn't give you. Mm. I am the giver of life. I am the giver of every good and perfect gift. -ish. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl can validate you but me. I created you. I know you. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. God knew that this pandemic was going to happen before the very earth was formed. And so the very fact that I know that, that's reassuring. Now is one of the best times in our life. Have I had times of uh, doubt during this pandemic? Yes, I have. But I tell you what, it only lasts for a fleeting moment. Have I had times of my faith being shaken? Yes, but I only allow it to last for a fleeting moment. And that's the thing that I will say to you on tonight. Please don't stay stuck where you are. Please. I'm not saying go out there and, and um, uh, make a big name for yourself or whatever you may call it. But just don't allow this to keep you stuck where you are. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. So I have um, one more question, then I want um, uh, you all to give us some scriptures, okay? But I want one more question before we get to the scriptures, because we want to make sure we leave everybody with some scriptures to hold on to. So when we hear the word pandemic, we think of something bad, all right? Because uh, that's just that's what we think about, right? But have you been blessed during the pandemic, okay? Where's, has there been a situation where you've been blessed during the pandemic? Share, share that with us, Melissa. Um, during the pandemic, have I been blessed? I can say one of the blessings that I've actually gotten during the pandemic um, has come in as a teacher. Um, having parents just reach out for reassurance mm -hmm. about what's been going on during the course of the pandemic as far as it was with their kids and their education. I had parents that I just didn't think I would hear from, reached out. And so that let me know that there was something that I was doing during the school year that they never really said that during the pandemic, it gave them reassurance that they could reach out to me 
to help them with their students at home and just to vent. I had a couple of parents, you know, just call and they call for one thing, but they ended up just talking. And they needed that moment just to talk. And so I felt blessed to know that there was something I had done, something in my character, something in my personality, something in my teaching that made them feel comfortable enough to even come to me. That's good. That's good. Tish, what about you? Um, uh, yes, I do believe that, um, you know, I've been a blessed. I, I think the most important thing, um, I try to remember is none of us are in this alone. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all in this together. There'll be days where I may need to be lifted up and there'll be days where I'll be the lifter up. Um, so, so calling individuals, just saying hello, just checking on them. Do you need anything? Are you okay? Um, so I, the other thing I, I thought about is, is now is a good time to start back writing letters. We've lost that sense mm -hmm. of writing people. Um, sending a postcard, put a card in the mail. Um, now we're so in tune to our phones um, that we've lost that sense of connection to people on um, writing them a letter. And I haven't done that, but that's been on my heart. Um, sit down and write. It doesn't have to be a long letter, um, but I, I can only imagine what that would do um, to someone's spirit that you sat down and you took the time to write them a letter, pick up the phone, don't text, pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, you know, are you okay? Do you need anything? Is there anything I want from the store? And so that has, not only has it been a blessing to individuals that I've reached out to, but it's been a blessing to me, um, you know, to be able to put a smile on someone's face. I called one of our golden agers and, you know, when you call them, they'll say, you made my day. Mm -hmm. Just a simple phone call doesn't take long. You know, you hear them say, you made my day. Um, I've had my niece sometimes say to me, you know, thank you for, you know, taking the time to talk to me. And I'm like, wow, something as simple as conversation. And she'll, she'll come the next day. I just brought you this little gift just to say thank you for taking the time to talk to me. And so I think that that's important, just realizing we are not in this alone. And I want to say this, um, if you don't mind, um, Sandra, I thought about the youth. Um, sometimes we think they want the word watered down. They don't necessarily want the word, water, the word watered down. They want to see authenticity. Yes. And I think when, th when they see that in believers, when they see that in Christians, not because, you know, I'm a minister or I'm an elder or this is what... Um, you know, the word Carrington has friends at school that I keep pointing back there. I'm sorry, because Carrington's in her room, but <laughs> she has friends at school that um, she has told them that, you know, ab about the calling that I have on my life. And they'll ask her questions to ask me. Or like when I used to go visit her sometimes, they'll say, when your mom come, can you tell her? I mean, can you tell us? Because we want to see her when she comes. I'm like, wow, God, these are college kids. Mm -hmm. I'm 51. So, you know, the fact that these college kids are asking my baby when your mom come or or they'll say something like, Karen, ask your mom, what does she think about blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that kids want to see authenticity. That's good. That's good. Authenticity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Melissa used the word transparency. I mean, and everybody, all, all of us need that. So um, before um, you, you and Melissa give us, uh, Tish and Melissa give us some scriptures, and before we turn it over to, to, um, to Bishop, uh, I just want to ask everybody, one of the things that um, the last question was, you know, how have you been blessed during the pandemic? And so y'all know I love assignments, right? Y'all know, Solid Rock, y'all know I love to give assignments. <laughs> So for your Bible study assignment this week, take the time to just get a sheet of paper or on your phone, however you're going to do it, and write down, how have I been blessed during the pandemic? How have I been blessed? You give it, you have two examples. Melissa gave you her example. Tish gave you her example on how they've been blessed. How have you been blessed during the pandemic? And, and get our, let's get our minds off of 
the um, all the, the the bad news and the things going on, and continue to look at the blessings of God and and how God has blessed us even in the midst of all this. So that's your homework, y'all. Know I love to give homework. That's y'all's homework uh, for Bible study. Uh, write down how have I been blessed during the pandemic, and actually write it down. How have I been blessed during the pandemic? So uh, we're going to ask Melissa, uh, Elder Melissa and Minister Tish to give us some scripture that we can hold on to and we can meditate on and read this week. And then we're going to turn it over to our pastor, Bishop Brooks, who will give uh, us closing remarks and, and close us out in prayer. So Melissa, we'll start with you with, with the scriptures. Um, I have Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Mm -hmm. um, I also came like Romans 10 and 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing comes from the word of Christ. And then 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Um, and the last one I'll give is Psalm 46 and 10, which is one of my favorites. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in all the earth. Amen. Know that I am God. That's good. Amen. Amen. Minister Tish? And she actually read, I think, all three of mine. <laughs> six, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, 3, 5 through 6, and Romans, did you say Romans 10, 17? Yep. Yes. And then the other one was uh, Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who, who love God, all things work together. I think, did you read that one? No. Nope. All things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. That's good. That's good. All right. So just to recap those, make sure everybody got them. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Romans 10, 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, Psalm 46 and 10, and Romans 8, 28. And Hebrews so, 11, 6. Oh, and Hebrews 11, 6. And you were six. saying that quite a bit earlier. Okay, Hebrews 11 and 6. So take those scriptures, uh, read them, meditate on them, ask God to speak to you speak to you through them, uh, hold on to them as, as our faith scriptures as we go through this, and remember to write down how have you been blessed during the pandemic. So uh, thank you, Melissa and uh, Tish and uh, Pastor uh, Bishop. We're going to turn it back over to you. Post out. Amen. Certainly thank God for uh, Minister Tish and Minister Melissa uh, for such giving us some insight uh, on, on faith during the pandemic. And, I, you know, I also, let me just add another scripture um, that, that really has been ringing in my spirit. It, it's, it's the 14th chapter of Matthew. Read it. It's, it, it's where, you know, they, they, when you read the whole chapter, you'll find that uh, they fed the, the, the crowd, the multitude with two fish and five barley loaves. Uh, and um, Jesus had just saw where John had just been beheaded, lost his friend. He was in a storm. And now... The boys are in the boat in a storm. And the question gets to be that, that, that I keep asking myself, uh, I'm in the storm, Lord. And if you're not going to get me out of the storm, what is it that you want me to get while I'm here? Mm. And that's what I want us to really focus on. The pandemic has not gone away. And uh, quite contrary to what we're being told from the White House, it's not going to just disappear. But while we're in the storm, I really believe that God is saying to us, you know, slow down. Take a moment to breathe. Take a moment, as uh, Minister Rogers was saying, to get back to write some letters, to call somebody, to spend some time just talking to somebody. I think God is causing us to really slow down a little bit and live. Uh, and one of the things, as you were talking about blessings from the pandemic, uh, live streaming has caused me to be in the living room of more folk uh, since I've been having to preach the empty pews than I would be seeing on Sunday morning. Uh, also, it requires a different level of faith for me to be able to preach to an empty church uh, rather than preaching to a church full of folk who are responding to you. So those are the things that, are, um, that, that, that have really, really been a blessing to me. 
and we're going into homes and into families or sitting down on Sunday morning where they don't sit down at the table like we did when we were growing up, but now they're sitting down having church and they're sitting down hearing what the Lord has to say. And here is the reality of it. Storms are going to come into all of our lives. Mm -hmm. The question is, how will we respond when the storm comes? And so what I'm learning is, I really believe that in the storm is where we really grow. Church is great. Uh, I, you know, things going great, things going good. I, I like that. But it's in the storm where our faith is really put to the test. And what good is a faith that's never tested? How do you know your faith really works if you don't ever try your faith? If your faith is never tried. If you never have to uh, put God uh, out there to see that he will do what he says he will do. And it is very true uh, that sure enough, it is God who has brought us through all of this. And God allowed the pandemic. So there has to be something good for us to come out of it. And uh, the Lord reminded me of a scripture that I gave us uh, is our theme scripture in our season of plenty at the beginning of the year, Psalm 68 and 19. Uh, and, and, you know, it talks about the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. God is blessing us. We are feeding more people in our community well. We are having drop-offs in the parking lot. Uh, we are being able to be a blessing to people that may never get to our sanctuary, may never come to 401 Creech Road, I know your families, you are able to talk to them and spend time with them. They may be all across the country, but my faith has grown to the point where I know that God is not, I'm, I've, I've never had a doubt that God is not going to bring us through this. I, I, I know that he's going to bring us through this. The question is, how am I going to respond while I'm in it? Here as well, in, in, when you read chapter 14, and I'll close right here. You read chapter 14, you will find that, that they were in the boat in the middle of the night and Jesus come walking on the water. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Peter remind, let me mind you that Peter was Peter, Peter was a fisherman, so he had been in tough waters. He had seen the storm raging and he had been out there when all of this is going on. And he knows that he cannot walk on water. Help me, Holy Ghost. He, he knows he cannot walk on water, but because he sees Jesus coming and he knows that through Christ I can do all things, he says, Lord, if it's you bid me come, and he gets down out of the boat, and the Bible says that he begins to walk on water. Listen, this has a lot to do with increasing our faith, trusting God when we can't see our way through, trusting God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, but some things that he will allow us to do simply because he's God all by himself. I just want to encourage us tonight, have faith, trust God. This is a season where you just got to make the decision to get out of the boat, do some things you've never done, ask God for directions, ask God for, for, for the ability to do some things, to bless somebody that you've never been able to bless. This is a season for the church to stand up and be counted. It's not a season. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So I just want to encourage us tonight, uh, after all of this great conversation that we've had uh, with these two great, three great ministers, I want to encourage us to get out of the boat. Don't get stuck. Uh, uh, Minister Tish said, well, don't get stuck in a rut because you are where you are. Ask God, Lord, since the, since the pandemic is not going to uh, just uh, snap your fingers and it be gone. What is it you would have me to do in the storm? And that's where our blessings will come from. Thank you so very much. Love you guys. Uh, back to you, Sandra. Okay. Uh, did you want to close us out in prayer, Bishop? All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I can right. do that. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, again, thank all of you for coming. Uh, next week, we anticipate having some more people come on. We're going to talk some more. Also, we are preparing uh, very soon to have some things in place for how it's going to look when we do go back to church. Uh, what is it going to look like? It don't look like we're going back anytime soon, but we do need to be prepared uh, if we have to go back in for a funeral or something like that. So we are going to have those kind of conversations coming on on Bible study our uh, time in the near future. So prepare your hearts, tell your friends to get ready for Bible study on Thursday nights so that we can hear what the Spirit has to say to the Lord. Also, I was talking to one of our brothers today 
Uh, we're looking at very possibly doing an all-night vigil of prayer where we can just pray and seek God's faith and find out what is it, Lord, that you want us to do? What's our role in the midst of this pandemic? Where is it, God, that you would have us to go in this season, uh, in this season of plenty? And some may not see it as a season of plenty, but uh, I just can tell you, if it had not been, for the Lord who was on our side, we would know what lack was really about. Those of us who are doing good, those of us who are making ways, those of us who have food on our tables and a roof over our head, we are in a season of plenty for there are many who are struggling right now, had no idea six months ago that they would be in this predicament. But we serve a God that's well able to do above and beyond and exceedingly more than we can even ask or think. So God, we say thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for being God all by ourselves. Thank you, God, that we're not in this pandemic by ourselves, but we're in this to grow our faith, God. We're in this, God, that you might be glorified in every decision that we make, every, every circumstance that comes up in our lives, God. Help us to take it to you. Help us to bring it to you, God, that you can give us direction and insight. Lord, we thank you tonight that we are able to say our God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. We are able to say, God, you brought us to it. So therefore, God, you can take us through it. In Psalms 46 and 1, it says, God is our refuge and our strength. You are a very present help uh, in the time of trouble. So God, in the midst of all the trouble and all that we're going through, all of the foolishness that we have in our lives, God, we declare and decree blessings upon blessings. We declare and decree that we won't take down, we won't compromise, we promise, God, to stand on your word and stand on your promise because you said in Hebrews 13 and 5, I think it is, that you would never leave us nor would you forsake us. God, you have promised to be with us, and so, God, we're going to stand on your promises. Now, God, in this season, increase our faith to the point, God, that we'll have no doubt that you'll bring us out. Help us, God, to have a ready word for those who don't know you yet, for those who might not understand, for those uh, who the devil has hoodwinked and and fooled into thinking that we're not going to get through this, but we are. God, help us to have a, a, a ready word, a rhema word, that they might be able to hear from you. And God, we give you glory. We honor and bless you. We ask now, Lord, that you would bless all of those under the sound of my voice. Ask God that you would bless Brother Bridges in the loss of his sister. Uh, ask God that you would give them courage in their time of loss. Give them comfort, God. Let them know that you're going to be right there by their sides. God, we love you, and we thank you tonight for this strong Bible study. Now, God, let your will be done. Use us to do it, and we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the days of our lives. Solid Rock Nation, we love you. Sister Kim and I, we love you guys. Keep praying with us. Keep praying for us. We're going to do that for you, and watch God bring us out of this smiling uh, with, with a blessing that we had no idea we were going to receive. Have a good night. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.